Everybody be very, very quiet. It's the Germans. see the F-15 uh, on the other side of the map, the American Aviation Hall. It's obviously the whole purpose of Spring Air Day here in Duxford is to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the arrival of the US Army 8th Air Force here at Duxford to commence operations against Germany. So the next thing we're going to do is take a look inside the American Aircraft Exhibition. And here it is, the American Aviation Hall. God bless you, America. Let's have a closer look. Oh, well, here we are, inside the American Aviation Hall. And yeah, that's a B-52. And that ain't all. Oh, God bless you, America. Look at this lot. I barely know where to start in this place. That is the prototype of the F-100 Super Sabre. You've got a, a Phantom down there. Look at the size of this B-52. Right, it just keeps going. Not just a B-52 either. There's a, there's a B-25 hanging from the ceiling up there. Behind that... You know, I don't even know what that thing is. I'm sure somebody's going to point it out in the comments. There's a B-29 at the back. The size of the B-29 compared to the B-52. Yep, there's an A-10 Warthog at the back there. Hanging from the ceiling above the A-10. You can see a U-2 spy plane. Hanging from the ceiling over there, you can see the tailplane of a C-47 Skytrain. Down here... <laughs> it's a UH-1 Huey helicopter. Over there is an SR-71 Blackbird. We're going to take a closer look at all of these. There's the Blackbird. Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. This thing could do Mach 3.5, three and a half times the speed of sound. It was designed as a replacement for that thing up there. The U-2 spy plane. The U-2 was used to overfly the Soviet Union for photo reconnaissance until one of them was shot down. Um, new Russian surface-to-air missiles that the Americans didn't think could actually reach. I think these things flew at 68,000 feet. And Gary Powers was shot down in a U-2. So U-2 overflights of the Soviet Union were cancelled after that until Lockheed Company designed this beauty because it was just too, it just flew too high and too fast for anything to be able to shoot you know effectively shoot it down this thing you can see have a quick look there see the front where it's warped this thing got so hot the pilots had to wear pressure suits because it flew so high and they couldn't exit the aircraft immediately on landing because the friction from the air at the speed it was travelling just made the whole aircraft too hot. This thing was amazing. And just to give you an idea of the size of the engines on the Blackbird, I'm deliberately trying to give you a shot with as many people in it, just so you can see. Look at that, that's just one of the engines. Right. There are aircraft in this hall that aren't as big as one of those engines. This thing had two of them. You can see down below, they've actually put the engines on display underneath the aircraft, just to give you an idea of how... What a feat of engineering this thing was. And this thing was designed and flew in the 1960s. Absolutely amazing. And just because I know there are many B-25 fans out there, get a load of that beauty. I'm not sure which variant that is. Uh, looks to have five forward firing machine guns as well as the turret on the top, the two at the side and the tail turret. What a beauty. Question answered. It's a Lockheed T-33. And no, I've never heard of it either. <laughs> Sorry. I know you'd all string me up if I didn't give you a shot of the B-29. So uh, there it is. It's the Wild Hog. Which is quite appropriate since I've just had a hog roast. Yeah, which is nice. And there it is. Unfortunately, you're, uh, well, you can actually see me in the reflection of the glass. This is about as close as we can get.
US Navy F4 Phantom. I seem to have a lot of Phantoms at Duxford. Hiding over here, just in front of one of the engine nacelles of the B-52D, is the F-111E. The world's first swing-wing combat aircraft. Entered service in Vietnam and was still being used up until the Gulf War. What's inter interesting about this thing is the entire cockpit section would eject. Uh, it didn't have ejection seats, the actual cockpit itself ejected from the aircraft, which was interesting. Check it out, they've got a jug! Let's see how close we can get to this thing. It turns out we can get pretty damn close indeed. Oh, isn't she a beauty? Yeah, I don't hack I don't really care how crap this thing is in War Thunder, I still love it. Speaking of things that are crap in War Thunder, I don't have a very good shot of it, I'm afraid. This it's just too big. But they have a liberator. And speaking of things that aren't in War Thunder and definitely aren't crap, hanging from the ceiling, do you know what it is yet? What a beauty in a sort of really ugly way <laughs> of an aircraft. Fairchild Republic A10 Warthog with the 30mm JAU cannon. A cannon that produces so much recoil it will actually stop the plane in flight <laughs> if you fire it for too long. Of course the Memphis Bell isn't the only B-17 at Duxford, they've got their own. What a beauty. Parks in front of the Liberator there. And just behind and above the B-17, they've got a TBF Avenger. Let's, uh, let's move in for a closer look at that. I love this thing in War Thunder. It's such a rugged, reliable, dependable aircraft. And it's a lot bigger in real life than I imagined. I love that thing, I really do. But uh, Duxford isn't all about aircraft, it is an Imperial War Museum and they have a land warfare hall here too, so uh, we will do well here. Oh, look at that, the Chieftain. 300 millimetres of frontal armour, but it was so mechanically unreliable that it only had something like a 35% availability rate. British Leyland engines. <laughs> it's no wonder they went bankrupt. Now, very reliable source informs me that uh, certain members of Wargaming staff have been seen at the Bovington Tap Museum taking measurements and photographs of one of these things, so expect to see one in the world of tanks near you, maybe not soon, but in the future. You're not going to believe this, but I actually ran into one of my YouTube subscribers. This is Dan. Dan, say hello to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. <laughs> we caught him just outside the Conqueror, which is um, hiding over there. Over there, it's not a T-54 sadly, but it's the next closest thing, T-55. And over here, I like this, that is an Honest John nuclear missile. Well, at least they were honest about it. <laughs> Unfortunately, this is more or less the best shot I can get of this thing, but um, it's the Comet, and our Quickie Baby loves this tank. And I'm getting quite fond of it as well. I've only just unlocked it myself. I haven't played many games in it, but monster gun depression. Very manoeuvrable. Great tank. It's a scumbag! Oh my god, they've got a Yag Panther. Oh, check this out. Let's get up to the side here. You can actually see inside and see the 88mm gun. Check that out. What a beautiful machine. <laughs> What's that? What's that stink? Oh my god, it's a lead! Hey, check it out, they've got a Nebelwerfer. And that, unless I'm very much mistaken, is the M4E4 Sherman. It's available in-game, but only as a premium on the Russian server, so... It's not the E2, it's not flatly armoured at the front, and it's definitely not the Easy 8 or the bog-standard M4. You can tell by the sort of um, 
raised indentations at the front. Uh, to me, unless I'm very much wrong and somebody knows the difference, I think that is the E4 show. It's a big gun. They've even got an SU-100. Look, it's even got a real wooden block. An IS-2. Look at the back of the turret and the machine gun. You recognise that anyway. Doesn't have a log though. Very suspicious. They've got a tiger. Sadly, it's a fake. It's actually based on the hull of some Russian vehicle. I'm not sure exactly which, but it sure is pretty anyway. Speaking of Russian vehicles, yeah, T3485. Although technically it's just a late model T34 with an 85 millimeter gun and a redesigned turret, but it's a T3485. I'm not sure about the authenticity though. It doesn't have a log. I must apologize. It does actually have a log. It's a real Russian tank. Check it out. Look, even the IS-2's got a log. Oh, that's authentic Russian, that is, right there. That's how you can tell. Look, an authentic Russian hull. It's got a log. Remember, kids, if in doubt, always ask. Yes, but does it have a log? Check out this Russian 57mm anti-tank gun. Is it really Russian? It has two logs. Now that's just being extravagant. Look, Western guns. How can you tell they're Western? No logs. Oh my God, it's the Germans. But you're not gonna believe this. I've actually run into another subscriber. This is Adam. Adam, say hello to YouTube. <laughs> that's the second guy in about 10 minutes that I've run into. And of course, where do they find me? Looking at tanks. <laughs> Don't worry, Adam, you get your moment of glory on YouTube in the next one's time this video goes up. It's Herr Leutnant Gruber's little tank.